Hot arid landscapes are very diverse landscapes. They are shaped by two particular forces though, wind and water. The wind can erode, transport and deposit material and sediment. And equally, water can erode, transport and de deposit material. And we're going to be looking at two landforms today. Uh, one shaped by wind, and that's sand dunes over here. And the other is canyons. In particular, we're going to be looking at the Grand Canyon. Some of you may recognise this picture. You may have even visited the Grand Canyon, very famous canyon. And, our, and the Grand Canyon is shaped by water. And our case study area is the American Southwest, particularly the Mojave and Sonoran Desert. So let's have a look at our first landform. And we're going to look at sand dunes first, shaped by uh, wind. And <clears throat> there are, as you can see in this map, there are a number of sand dunes in the American Southwest. The Algodones sand dunes are the largest area of sand dunes. They're about 45 miles long. And uh, they're just one example. Down in the southeast corner of California in the Sonoran Desert. Let's have a look at now how they form. And there are three main stages to the formation of a sand dune. The first stage is their initial formation. And the wind uh, is key. It blows over the land and because arid landscapes are quite bare there are very few um, obstacles um, around and so it picks up a lot of speed and it's able to carry and transport material. Now we can see down here there's these saltating particles. These particles being carried by saltation and that's the bouncing of material along the surface. The wind picks up the material and carries it briefly for a few seconds and then drops it. And it keeps doing that and it's a bit of a bouncing effect. And this will continue until the particles reach a plant or an obstacle and they start to accumulate around the obstacle, as we can see, as we can see here. And the plant, the reason it accumulates is that the plant or obstacle reduces the wind speed and leads to deposition. And so over time, we get an accumulation of particles. The second stage is growth. That accumulation continues to grow. The wind is crucial in continuing to provide sediment uh, through saltation. And as the particles continue to be deposited around this obstacle, the sand dune will develop and it will keep growing. As the dune grows and gets bigger, it reduces the wind speed further and we get more and more deposition. And that's called a feed positive feedback loop, where the dune just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And over time it creates an asymmetric shape. You can see that the windward side over here is much shallower and longer than the leeward side over here. So that's the growth stage. The third stage is sand dune migration because they're not static landforms. They move about. In fact, in China, they move up to 100 metres per year. And we know that uh, from the previous two stages that the wind uh, transports the sediment in. And in the third stage, we start to see the particles migrating by saltation, which is that bouncing movement, that wind picking the sediment up for a few seconds and then dropping it. Um, and it starts migrating up the windward side
of the sand dune. And a second process that takes place is surface creep, which is the wind wear rolls sediment along the surface. And this might be because the material is slightly larger, or it might be uh, because the wind just doesn't have quite enough energy to pick it up off the surface. So the particles move up the windward side of the sand dune and they start to accumulate there at the top of the dune. Now as this accumulation builds up, it reaches a certain level when it becomes unstable and it can't support it anymore and it collapses down the slip place, which is also known as the, the leeward side, the other side to the wind. And as a result, the dunes migrate over time and move in the direction of the wind. And we can see that in this diagram here. The, on the, those dotted lines, the, the uh, dune is moving, it's migrating in the direction of the wind. And that is how sand dunes form. And this, what I've described here is how Barkens sand dunes form. But there are other sand dune types, things like uh, star sand dunes, linear uh, sand dunes, and they might be um, something you want to go and research further. So that's how wind shapes sand dunes, and that's our first landform. And now we have our second landform, which is river canyons. And this is where water is the key force in shaping this landform. And we're going to particularly look at the example of the Grand Canyon, which is located just on the edge of the Mojave Desert in the state of Arizona. Now the first thing to note about the Grand Canyon and canyons, they're on a much larger scale to sand dunes. In fact, the Grand Canyon is 1600 metres deep. And it's much, much wider at the top. In fact, you can barely see the river at the bottom. Just, see, just drawing on where we can see that river. Um, the river looks so small, it, it's almost surprising that it has shaped that landscape. But it has over a very long period of time. The other distinctive feature about the Grand Canyon is the number of different rock types you can see. And that's very evident. Um, in this picture, uh, in the top left-hand corner, you can see these different colours, the browns, the, the sort of cream colours, the red colours. And what is even more evident is this stepped-like profile that has formed. If you look at almost a sort of cross-section, it's a sort of profile step. And it, in fact, down in the left bottom left-hand corner, I've got a cross-section here showing this step-like profile. And you'll see how there are some areas where there's vertical steps and then somewhere it's a much lower angle. And where you've got the vertical stages, you've got more resistant rock. And where you've got a lower angle here, you've got less resistant rock. Roads much faster. So they're the features that we can see on the Grand Canyon. Stepped profile, much wider, much bigger scale. Let's now have a look at its formation. So the formation of a river canyon all starts, or the Grand Canyon starts in the Rocky Mountains, which is the source of the Colorado River, the water. And the Rocky Mountains are, are not in Arizona, they're much further away. And the Colorado River um, is what we call an exogenous river. And that means it's, firstly, it's a permanent river, which in an arid environment is 
quite rare, a lot of them are seasonal and dry up. And secondly, it is from an external source, different environment, the Rocky Mountains. So that's the uh, Colorado River, and it's been working away um, and eroding, cutting down for six million years. Very long time. Eroding the landscape. And there have been two key erosional processes. The first one is hydraulic action. Hydraulic action is where the, water, the sheer force of the water throws itself against the riverbed and erodes and breaks down the, the, the riverbed. Secondly is abrasion. And abrasion is where it picks up pieces of sediment, pebbles, particles, carries it with it in the water and throws it against the riverbed and acts like some sandpaper scraping, abrading, wearing down the riverbed. And the two of those erosional processes combine to result in this erosion down through the um, the rock. And you can see here I've drawn a kind of cross section of the, the, the Grand Canyon and you can see I've drawn this steps like profile made up of the more resistant rock here where there's that vertical face and then the less resistant rock there where you've got a lower angle. And the two of those together, those different rock types, make this step profile where you've got differential erosion. Which basically means two rock types erode at different rates. Um, but that's not the only force that's been taking place. There's one other force that has been crucial, and that's tectonic uplift. And as the river's been cutting down, eroding, the land has been rising up due to tectonic uplift. And that's the why the Grand Canyon's so deep. It keeps on providing material land for the Colorado River to keep eroding down through, through hydraulic action and abrasion. And as a result, we have a landscape that is now enormous. It's 1,600 metres deep. And that's why we have such a, uh, a sense of scare and awe when we see this particular landform. So that's how rivers shape uh, and create canyons. We've seen how wind creates sand dunes. Um, and we've seen how those two key agents shape hot arid landscapes.